Even though Chumley's immatureness and happy-go-lucky attitude make a part of his charm and make him likable and fan favorite, they also have a great part in his inability to do work properly. Over the years and numerous seasons, Chum has time and time again proved that he shouldn't have any responsibilities, and today we'll be looking at 8 times he proved that he can't and should not run a pawn shop. When Chumley proved that he'll never be able to run the pawn shop for the first time, it was in the 12th episode of the very first season of the show when he bought a fake heart piece for $300, a purchase which understandably left the old man pretty angry and prompted him to say that Chumley shouldn't deal in art since he barely knows how to tie his own shoes. Because Chumley felt that he had been working in the shop long enough to buy some cool stuff like art, Rick decided to give him a lesson in how to distinguish fake catching from a real one. He started by telling Chum how the artist first takes a copper plate and then puts a layer of wax over it which is called a ground. After that he takes a metal pen and writes or rather draws through the wax. Once he has finished the picture, he pours acid over the whole thing which etches into copper where there is no wax to protect it, hence the name etching. In the next step, the artist puts ink on the picture that can now be seen on the copper plate and then takes a piece of paper and presses the copper into it so that the picture is transferred to that piece of paper. There's no reason to believe that that lesson wasn't beneficial for Chumley, and even though he probably didn't make the same mistake twice in the years and seasons to come, he did have his fair share of mishaps and blunders, thanks to which he will always remain the joker of the cast and not the main man running the entire thing. You need to read him by his damn hand. I'll teach him the difference between a real etching and a fake etching. He really doesn't know what art is. I don't think he can spell it. <laughs> you would think that by the time season 4 was filmed, the Harrisons would have learned that Chumley should never, under any circumstances, be left alone and without supervision. Thank you. Even though more often than not he seems to be the scapegoat when something goes wrong at the shop, it is mostly well deserved. In one of the episodes from season 4, he was minding the shop all alone when a man walked into the shop carrying a vintage Gibson mandolin he picked up at a yard sale. He was hoping to make some money off of it so he could take his family on a trip to Ireland. With Rick and Corey out of reach, it was up to Chum to appraise the item. Encouraged by Rick drooling over another mandolin they had in the shop earlier, he decides to go above his purchase limit of $1,000 and seals the deal at $1,500. Even though the mandolin had the decals on the edges and the stamp of the modern script Gibson logo was visible through one of the F-holes, it turned out that it was one of the thousands of fakes that can be found across the US. Unfortunately for Chumley, who was worried about impressing Rick, he lost $1,400 since a friend and music shop owner later estimated the mandolin's worth at just 100 bucks. While Chumley spends a lot of his money on things that most people enjoy, like cars or shoes, he appears to have used some of it to make illegal purchases and consequently also had to spend money on lawyers and legal fees following his arrest in March 2016 after 12 firearms, crystal meth, marijuana, Xanax, and evidence of cocaine use on the property were found during a raid of his home on account of a sexual assault allegation. He later took a plea deal that reduced his charges down to a felony weapons charge, unlawful possession of a firearm, and gross misdemeanor of attempted drug possession. According to USA Today, and he pled guilty to a felony weapons charge, unlawful possession of a firearm, and misdemeanors related to drug possession, eventually receiving three years of probation and counseling, with the possibility of facing two to five years in prison should he violate the terms. Shumley's lawyer David Chesnoff confirmed to USA Today that no charges were ever filed in the sex assault case that originally sparked the investigation that led to the drug and gun charges and that his clan had been cleared. The TV star had to forfeit the guns and drugs that were seized of course and earlier this year his probation ended. In an episode aptly named Chum's Risky Business from season 15, a woman entered the pawn shop with boxes and boxes of old comic books she inherited from her uncle. All the comic books she doesn't know anything about were handed down to her and she was looking to sell them, certain there's something valuable in the pile. Judging by the prices on them, Chumley concluded they date from 70s or 80s, the period also known as the Bronze Age of Comics. Without asking for a second opinion, Chumley started haggling. The woman's initial asking price was $2,000, but Chumley immediately lowered it, taking into account the time needed to go through all of them and find the diamond in the rough. He offered her $50 per box, which summed up to $350, but they eventually struck a deal at $500, with Chum saying that life is about chances and sometimes you just gotta take him. 
Unfortunately, when an expert checked the comics out, it turned out that this wasn't the right chance to take, as he said that the comics would sell for about $200 if the Pawn Stars were lucky. If you spent 500 bucks on some comic books, I'll be lucky to get like 180 bucks out of, and seven boxes of the recyclable paper. In an interview with the Huffington Post, Big Haas revealed that Chumley's biggest error in the shop happened before the show even started. After someone pawned their stand-up base to the shop for $700, Shumley leaned it against the shelf and walked away, but the base fell and shattered into pieces. However, instead of telling his bosses about accidentally breaking the instrument, he decided to shove the pieces into a box and put the pawn number in the box as if nothing had happened. When the owner eventually came back to get the base, he obviously freaked out upon discovering it in pieces and the pawn shop had to pay the man the full value for it. Since it turned out to be a rare instrument, Rick ended up writing a check for $20,000. Admittedly, Chumley is not the sharpest knife in the Pawn Stars drawer, which is exactly why Corey decided to play a prank on him in the episode titled One Way Ticket back in Season 8. After seeing that there's a lot of money in the jackpot, Chumley went on and on about winning the lottery so Corey decided to screw with him a little bit by bringing him a scratch card. Chumley immediately decided to scratch it and seemingly won $10,000. He jumped up straight away and tossed his Pawn Stars shirt on the floor, saying that he's going on a vacation. However, Corey then revealed to Rick and the old man that the ticket he bought for Chumley at the party store was fake, and then he spent the rest of the day trying to reach his buddy to stop him from spending his alleged winnings. Chumley texted Corey back at some point to let him know that he purchased a ticket to Cayman Islands so he would avoid paying taxes on the money. This made Corey feel rather guilty, so he decided to come clean and confess his prank to Chum who sounded pretty shocked on the phone. Still, when he came back to the shop later, he said that he hadn't fallen for Corey's prank, but simply used the opportunity to take a day off. Since nobody is comfortable with being a clown all the time, we're not quite convinced. Back in 2011, a young woman joined the all-male cast of Pawn Stars for the show's fifth season. Her name was Olivia Black, and she joined the Pawn Stars team as the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop's night shift employee. Thanks to her good looks and sheer enthusiasm, it didn't take her long to learn the ropes under Chumley's supervision and become popular among the show's fanbase. It didn't take long for Chum to fall for attractive newcomer under his wing, and as a result, he worked double shift at the shop. Chumley had no problem with showing his affection, which isn't totally professional and certainly is not a trait of someone capable of running a business. Still, for better or for worse, things changed soon enough for both of them, especially Olivia. Even though her appearance on the show resulted in increased viewership, she was fired from the show only a year later, when her photos from a mature photo shoot leaked. While the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop took some flack from fans because of Black getting fired, most of them didn't know that she was fired only in front of the cameras. Rick finally decided to provide some explanation later on, claiming that it was just a production company that didn't want her working there anymore, and that, in reality, he never actually fired her from the shop. There were allegations that Black eventually sued the production company so she could get back on the show, but she denied those claims. However, she did make a petition on Change.org to try and return to the show, but she never did. Eventually, she simply left her job at the pawn shop altogether and pursued her career elsewhere. As we mentioned earlier, Chumley has had quite a few run-ins with the law despite the fact that we got used to seeing him as a comic relief and dim-witted character that serves as a punching bag to the other members of the Pawn Stars cast. Even though his arrest in March 2016 made the headlines, it wasn't actually the first time the TV star found himself in hot waters. Chum's troubles with the law actually started way back in 2012 when he got into a well-documented brawl with an unknown man. In the video, Chum and his friends are hanging out in front of his Rolls Royce when a stranger approaches them. According to Chum, the guy was harassing them and demanded a ride in Chum's car, and when they refused to indulge him, the guy threatened to pull a gun. Shortly after, the man reached for something in his pocket, so Chum and his gang clocked him in the face, dropped him on the floor and fled the scene. When facing accusations later on, Chumley claimed that it was in self-defense and even though the charges were eventually dropped, this is not something a man who's running a business should get involved in. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.